Alrighty guys, what is up? Day Daddy here tonight, and uh, since it's almost the new year, uh, I wanted to touch on a topic uh, to kind of rein in 2024, and that is the best deep learning rig for the money in 2024. Now, as always, um, this is you know my opinion, um, but I do think that there is a lot of validity to this or to this approach that I'm about, about to share with you guys. Um, and I'll compare and contrast this with several other, um, you know, common strategies that I see people do. Uh, and then you can decide for yourself what you think is the best. But, you know, for me personally, as far as uh, performance for the money, I don't think you can beat this. So we'll just go ahead and dive right in. So, you know, best deep learning rig for the money. Um, I recently, and I've, I've posted some videos in the past and I'll, I'll link those in the description, um, uh, working with Dell power edge R720 servers. Um, and these are, you know, older for sure, but they're workhorses, they're solid. Um, and they still have a lot to offer. I think, um, in the present day, especially for, uh, people that are, you know, trying to get into deep learning or, you know, looking for a cheap way to get access to the resources to work with large language models or computer vision um, or you know any of these other kind of hot topics um, we have today but so what I want to bring your attention to is uh, we'll just kind of go through this um, latest build out or something very similar to what I just built out I, I beefed mine up quite a bit uh, for a particular application um, with the Bitcoin blockchain, but this is what I think would be the optimal, uh, rig for the money in 2024. And, uh, I, I, I've bought all these components and I actually bought more of them. So this is kind of a pared down version of what I've actually implemented in real life. But this is the exact server I bought for the exact price I bought it for, uh, from save my server. So you can see, I'm, this is a link to their deals of the week. So highly recommend them. I bought many servers from them and they're always awesome. But this particular server was uh, uh, 40 core total. So two CPUs uh, at 20 cores a piece. Um, a little bit older CPU, but, but pretty solid. Um, 256 gigs of RAM came with it. Now it's DDR3 RAM and that's 16 by 16 uh, at um, 1600 megahertz. So definitely not the fastest RAM that you're gonna see, but Again, solid, it works, and it's cheap. Um, the RAID controller, also solid, works. Um, it come or it came with this particular deal, this particular server came with um, two 1.2 terabyte um, SAS hard drives. So, um, you know, this isn't what I would use or what I, I didn't, you know, choose to use them, but what you can do or what I would recommend doing is use these as... Uh, a separate uh, virtual drive and just use it as a boot drive. Um, you know, maybe maybe make it RAID uh, RAID one, so you have some redundancy, and then put your your boot uh, drives there, and that way you can hot you can swap one out and you know move it to a different server should anything happen. So just a, one idea there, um, and then I paired this with um, and just I mean look at two hundred five dollars for all this compute power. You really can't beat it. Um, and then I paired that with uh, two Tesla P40s at 187 dollars a piece. So this is a ton of compute uh, for really a whole, not a whole lot of money. Um, so it gives you 48 gigabytes total of VRAM at your disposal, um, and actually a pretty good amount of CUDA cores uh, and everything else to work with. But we'll get into that in a second when we get into the comparison. Um, you do have to buy some adapters, and I go into this in a video of how. When I showed how how to actually install these, um, you know, in the server, and I'll, I'll link those in the video description. Uh, and then finally, uh, I I like these uh, Team Group SSDs uh, or SATA SSDs. Um, I've used them in quite a few of my servers. They're cheap, they're reliable, and I know that they are compatible. So that's why you know I recommend these, and I continue to use them. So I got five of these at two terabytes a piece. That's going to give you ten terabytes worth of storage, uh, fairly fast storage um, that you can use for uh, your data for your projects. Um, so that puts us right at about $1,000 for this whole setup. And this is really 
um, you know, as far as a, a, a AI, ML, DL setup, you really can't beat this for the money. Um, you know, I, I would, in fact, if, if anybody in the comments knows a better way or a better setup for less than a thousand dollars, I'd really like to hear about it. Um, okay. So the next thing is, you know, how much does it cost to operate monthly? So this is, I took the, uh, the power consumption over the last month on average, so that was about 3.4 kilowatts. And yes, I was, you know, training and running inference and doing, doing some other things, not the entire time, but you know, a, a good chunk of the time. So I feel like this is a fairly realistic number. Um, the electricity cost in my area is about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, so if you do the simple math here, uh, and I'm just basically saying that a month is approximately 30 days, it's going to run about $12 and, you know, call it 50 cents um, to actually operate this in electricity costs per month. So, you know, really not too much, at least I don't think so. I think this is reasonable, especially uh, comparatively speaking. So anyway, this is this is what I would recommend. If you're looking for, you know, something where you can really tackle pretty much any uh, problem um, in you know, AI, ML, DL, this is this is a setup for you. Um, and we'll compare that to a setup I built in the past. So this is a, 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 a custom rig. So this is the, uh, the other approach I see a lot of people go is they'll build a, a custom, um, you know, a custom rig. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just what I found is it, it's expensive for what you actually get. So for example, this is almost the same price still to this day. Um, and you get six cores versus 40 cores yes it's faster so it has a, a faster base clock speed um you also are only getting 32 gigs of ram in this case uh, again faster ram but you know a lot less of it uh and then in this case i only have one nvme uh two terabyte drive for long-term storage uh, and again much more performant but also a lot smaller so you know yeah is this rig probably uh from, from a general standpoint, a lot newer and a lot more performant. Yeah, probably. But, you know, it doesn't have the raw power and the raw numbers for the same money that you get with um, this guy. So, you know, nothing wrong with custom, but, you know, this is something I've built and actually I use this every day. So it's a great, a great PC. It's a great rig. It's just probably a little bit underpowered for some of the larger problems that you might want to tackle, um, you know, in, in, in deep learning, especially with computer vision and in large language models. So, um, nothing wrong with it, but this is probably more for the entry level. And this is, this is a good, you know, general all purpose machine for just about anything that you want to tackle. And the good thing I like about this too, is you can always add to it, right? You can swap these out for beefier GPUs. You can, uh, add, uh, storage, um, you know, you can swap out the CPU. There's, you can customize it in any way that you want, uh, depending on what it is you're actually trying to do. You can add RAM. So, you know, all of these, all of these things. And then finally, another route I've seen a lot of people go is recommending, um, cloud GPU. And there's nothing wrong with that either. That's actually, you know, if you have the money, that's a fantastic way to go. Um, but for me personally, I like the ease of directly accessing your hardware um, that makes you know swapping things out large data a lot more effective when you can actually physically touch the servers uh, a lot quicker um, and honestly it's way less expensive I mean this is this is uh, so it's a little backstory this is Linode or was Linode before Akamai bought them uh, I've been using them for three plus years now I love them um, they're a really good alternative to like your AWS, your, uh, you know, Google cloud, uh, Azure, you know, the, the big three players. And then uh, this is a, from what I, from my research, a much cheaper option. So I, I've, I've always been using them. Um, but, uh, even with them, you're looking at for something that's comparable. So two GPUs, again, these are. RTX 6000s, these are quite a bit more performant than what we have. But if you look at the specs here, for $2,000 a month, 
uh, you know, you actually, the only thing that you're, only, the only performance benefit you're getting is access to these two newer GPUs. But it's at the detriment of less storage, hell of a lot more money, less RAM, and then also you have caps on um, data transfer, um, network usage in and out. So, you know, there's all these other caveats to using cloud-based solutions. Um, so just wanted to keep all this in perspective. So, you know, just know there are other options. Don't, you know, don't just take my word for it because, you know, I say it's the best. I wanted to kind of show you some other options and some other, other avenues. Um, I, w I wonder why this isn't pulling up. I want to show you, there we go. I want to show you guys the GPU specs. So this is the RTX uh, 6000. So same amount of VRAM we had in our build, um, slightly, well, I guess about 1,200 more CUDA cores. Um, I forget how many tensor cores are in ours, but I think it's closer to 300. Um, and then about five grand more gigaflops. So this is in teraflops. So if you convert it back to gigaflops, it's about five grand more. But Anyway, so this is just goes to show. This is what you get when you, um, you know, when you use this cloud-based solution as far as access to GPUs. So let's let's put all this together and let's actually compare side by side and see what this might look like. So in terms of CPU cores, for our implementation, you get forty. With the custom, you get six. With cloud-based, you get sixteen. Um, clock speed, yeah, this is slower than the custom and probably slower than cloud-based. I, I wasn't able to actually get it, but you know, CPU clock speed really isn't as important if you're looking for um, machine learning, deep learning, uh, AI applications. You really care more about um, you know, RAM, storage, and GPU, at least in my opinion. Um, in this case, you get way more RAM, in this case, than with the custom and cloud-based. Uh, RAM speed slower for sure, and this, this, this sucks. Uh, in truth, but uh, it's also significantly cheaper um, and you can add to it more easily, or I guess I should say more for less cost. Um, and then I imagine, you know, this this is probably even a little bit better than what you can get with your custom or what we have with our, our custom. So as far as uh, your RAM speed and then um, storage, obviously way more storage in this case, than with the custom with the cloud-based solution, um, same number of GPUs here, or you know, two two GPUs. Custom, we got one. Cloud-based, two. Um, you know, and you you guys kind of get the idea here. Uh, but if you go through all of these specs, especially for the GPU, you'll find that really, even with the GPU, we are really not sacrificing that much performance, uh, even though we're using a much older uh, GPU as far as just performance on paper, the architecture and other things make, make a, a good bit of difference, but, uh, you know, for the money, you really, you're really getting a, a lot of performance even by, you know, today's newest standards. Uh, and then if you look at the upfront cost, this is going to cost you actually the least upfront versus the custom and cloud-based solution. Well, of the custom and our solution, it's the least. Of course, cloud-based doesn't cost you anything to start, but the monthly costs after the very first month, you'll be paying $2,000 for a dedicated instance, which is twice what uh, our upfront cost is and versus our $12.50 monthly cost. So I hope this kind of paints a better picture of why you know this particular strategy is so advantageous. Not only do you get a lot of performance, it's also relatively cheap, comparative. Um, and yes, the hardware is a bit older, um, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter how old it is. It really matters the performance that you get from it. Um, and then one other caveat I do want to say here is that uh, nowadays you can pay, uh, pay per compute or by hour, basically how much you actually run it. So there are some solutions that, that may work better for you that way, which you could explore. Um, you know, these are a little bit less... Uh, flexible and easy because you have to often submit jobs and it's harder to troubleshoot. So, you know, I don't love them as much, but, you know, if you're really, um, you know, on a budget, these might be things you can explore. You could look at something like CoLab 
or you could look at uh, Kaggle offers um, you know a relatively cheap monthly service. But all of those you're going to be sharing compute, tight jobs time out after a while. So there's a lot of things to consider. Um, you know they may look cheaper on paper, but you know I can say that I've at least used Kaggle and some of those other uh, uh, sorry and, and Colab and a few others and I've not really been impressed. Um, you know, even though the price looks attractive. But in this case, just to give you something concrete from Linode, uh, this is a $3 an hour or hourly cost uh, per, per compute. So for example, the model I'm training right now takes about eight hours to train. Um, and let's say that I trained it 25 different times, which you know isn't, is actually not a whole lot comparative to how much I've, I've trained models in the past. Um, but just, just using that, you know, let's say that you could, you could get the model tuned in 25 trains or 25 different training instances that would cost you about 600 bucks. So, you know, again, hourly may look cheap, but when you start looking at how much you're going to be using it and how long training takes, um, and this isn't even counting inference. So, you know, just want to paint a picture of, you know, how complicated these things can get when you're really running cost analysis for where the best uh, amount of money or the best performance for the money really is. Um, and, you know, I firmly believe that it still is in this older hardware, um, buying it and assembling it yourself, uh, you know, self-managing, uh, it's the value is still here. So just wanted to Give that update for 2024. Um, you know, if you have any questions, please feel, please feel free to reach out to me or uh, drop some comments uh, in the uh, drop some comments under the video, <laughs> and um, I'll be happy to respond and give you some feedback. But anyway, guys, thanks for listening, and I will see you guys in the new year. All right, guys. Brief reminder here. If you enjoyed the content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so I can continue to grow and produce better and better content for you. If you really enjoyed the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee, and the link for how to do that will be in the video description below. Um, if nothing else, please just give me some feedback and in the comments and let me know how I'm doing, uh, if anything's unclear, or if there are anything uh, that I can improve on. Thank you again, guys, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.